Hey scholars, good to be back with you. And today let's learn about algorithms. Now we hear about them a lot, we use the word a lot, but maybe the details have eluded us. Well let's fix that. Let's learn about algorithms, how they work. We're going to develop one so you can see an example of, of what an algorithm looks like. Okay, the word algorithm comes from the work of a 9th century Arabic uh, mathematician. And like a lot of words that start with A-L, it uh, actually originally comes from Arabic, like the name of the star, Aldebaran, there you go, or algebra, another example. So an algorithm is just a recipe. An algorithm is an unambiguous set of instructions that tells you how to solve a problem, or more often a class of problems. The most useful algorithms are the ones that will solve a lot more than one problem. Okay? And so what they do is they clearly define the steps, they clearly define when you should stop, and the best ones are always converge, always give you an answer, and they'll also tell you uh, where, the, uh, how, uh, how precise your answer is. They'll give you a range of what your answer lies. Okay? They're almost always numerical, and because they're not symbolic, you don't get exact answers. You get approximate numerical answers. So it's important to know how accurate that answer is. So, in order to do this, we're going to need a sample problem to solve. Let's do this. Let's find the roots of an equation, or find a root. Find a root of an equation. All right, what does that look like? Well, let's see. Let's, let's just draw some equation. We'll, we'll, we'll get, do the details later here. There. Find this. Okay, well, why would you want to do that? Well, math is useful to engineers anyway, and physicists and scientists, because it tells you things about the world around you that you want to know. Well, why would this tell me something about the world I want to know? Well, there's lots of physical problems that devolve into finding roots. Let's say I have a projectile, I'm, you know, I'm throwing a ball or an arrow or something, and I want to know where it's going to hit the ground. Well, what's the altitude when it hits the ground? Well, the altitude is zero. Well, if this was altitude and that was distance, the root of this equation is the range. That's the position where it hits the ground. There's an example of why finding roots is a useful thing to do, and there are many, many, many others. Okay, we want to find that. All right, well, how are we going to do it? You know, there's lots of ways. Hang on, I'm going to clean this up a little bit so we can start fresh. Okay, there's lots of ways. Let's try this. Let's try a really, really simple one. Let's step forward with really big steps. So we bracket the answer. And what we will notice is between there and there, the sign changes. It goes from positive to negative, although it could go from negative to positive, either one. Okay, so our algorithm is going to do this. One. Step. Well, hang on. That's not one. One is to find a starting point. Find a starting point. You're going to have to do that yourself. So we'll start there. Step two, define delta x. Okay, delta x is how far we're going to step forward. At first, anyway. Okay, define delta. So step three, step forward until sign, and sign changes. That means step forward until uh, y goes from positive to negative, or from negative to positive, whatever. Okay, now, there's where the sign changes. We now know we know the root lives inside that range right there. We've just gone from the whole infinitude of that uh, of the x-axis down to one specific range. We now know that the root lives in there somewhere. All we got to do is find it. Well, we could do a couple of things. We could uh, fit a straight line between those. 
and then see where the straight line goes through zero. That would work. That would definitely work. How about this? Another one is let's just cut delta x in half and calculate another point. We'll cut delta x in half and select a new range. So, once we cut delta x in half, now we know the root lives either there or in there, one of the two. Well, in this case, it'll live there. There's our new range. There's our new range. And then keep repeating. Okay, so 5. Repeat until delta x is small. Well, what's small mean? Well, it depends on the problem. If I'm throwing a ball, then I get to the point where delta x is that much, a centimeter. I don't care anymore. I don't need to know the range anymore precisely. If the ball is this big, and I've got the answer down to that far, who cares? Hey, now, if I'm looking at something where uh, a tiny, tiny delta x is necessary, well, I'm going to have to define it that way. But the point is, I now get to choose this, and when I'm done, I'll know what delta x is. I'll know that the, the uh, root lies within that range. So I'll have a very good estimate of how accurate my answer is. That's an algorithm. Okay? It's a clear, unambiguous set of instructions. It's robust. It'll almost always work. And it works on all equations, all continuous equations. All right. Now, is this one very efficient? Well, probably not, but it's efficient enough. Now, this is all nice in the abstract. Let's go to MATLAB and let's do uh, an example problem, okay? Okay, here we are in MATLAB, and you can see in the command history over there, I've been uh, playing around making sure that this algorithm works before I turn the recorder on. Well, first thing we're going to need is an equation. So I've made this equation up. Now, it doesn't have any physical significance, but it has some properties that make it useful for what we want to do. Now, I know from figuring this out before I turn the recorder on that the root of that equation is approximately 3.43. So I'm going to look at the uh, range between 0 and 4 in my easy plot command. Let's turn the grid on as well. There it is. And you can see right there, that does look like about 3.43, so that's, that makes sense. We're going to need a starting point. Let's start at 0, and let's make our delta x equal 1. Okay, so let's define dx. That'll be 1. Now we're going to start looking over here to find our uh, variable values. We'll just use the workspace as a, as a nice way of keeping track of what we're doing. Let's define a range of x's that goes from 0 by steps by dx to 4. Now I don't really need dx in there right now because it defaults to 1, but let's, let's keep the dx in there for in times when the algorithm doesn't start with dx equal 1. So there you are, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's calculate function values for that. So positive, 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 negative. Okay, that means the root lives between 3 and 4 which we already knew, but um, it's nice that the algorithm is telling us the same thing. So let's define something called x1, and we'll call that 3, and x2 is going to be 4. Okay, then we know that the root lives between x1 and x2. So let's say dx equals dx over 2. When we do that, it goes between, from 1 to 0.5. I cut the dx in half, delta x, and I'll say that my x new, the one I'm, the, the new value I'm trying to evaluate, is one plus x one plus dx. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to add my new dx to it. So it's 3.5, right smack in the middle, and f there is negative, okay? Because it went from positive to negative right there, I now know that the root, the root lives between 3 and 3.5. So I'll say x2 is now x new. If the root changes signs, then x2 is x new, and if it doesn't change signs, x1 is x new. 
All right, now I know the root lives between 3 and 3.5, which is correct. So let's just keep doing this. dx gets cut in half. x nu gets recalculated. And I'm going to evaluate it again. Okay, positive. So it didn't change signs between x1 and x nu. All right, so that means x1 is, whoops, x nu. Okay, so now I look over here, I know my root lives between 3.25 and 3.5. Okay, I'm tightening in on it. I've got, uh, I know where the root lives to within 0.25. That's good. Let's just keep going. Cut dx in 2 again. Calculate x nu again. Evaluate f at x nu. It's still positive. So since it didn't change signs between x1 and x nu, then x1 is x nu. Now I know that the root lives between 3.375 and 3.5. Okay, let's just do it again. Cut dx in half. Calculate a new x nu. Evaluate. Oh, it does change signs. So now I know that x2 is x nu. Now I've got it within that far. That's pretty good. 0 0.625. I've got a pretty good estimate of the answer. Let's go through one more time. Okay, dx over 2. Calculate x nu. Evaluate. Ah, no change in sign. So x1 is x nu. Now I know the answer is between 3.4063 and 3.4375. I've got a very good estimate on the answer. In fact, I've got the first two numbers correct, the first two significant figures. I can keep going if I want. I can keep doing this forever, I guess, if I want to, at least until I hit the precision of the computer. But it's easy to see that our algorithm is working. It's converging on the correct solution, and we have a very clear estimate right there of uh, how accurate our answer is. And we know when that gets small enough that we don't care anymore, we'll be able to stop. So we've developed an unambiguous set of instructions. We've shown it converges. It shows it converged on the right answer. And we're able to tell how good our answer is. That's an algorithm. I hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.